welcome back to Caesar Man Warrior, and this is another roster review. This is another one of my patrons. He hails from the Guild of Storming to Isengard, so shout out to them. Uh, his name is Radonis, and um, so he's background real quick. He's been playing for about nine or ten months. Um, he took a little bit of a break, and he's 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 a dolphin. He's not a he's not a whale. He doesn't spend a ton of money in the game. Um, he buys the ten dollar and ninety nine cent pack, and then occasionally spends about. Uh, you know, $10 here, $10 there, uh, anywhere from $20 a month to, you know, $50, $60 a month. So a bit of a dolphin, but not a huge whale. Um, really, he uses the majority of the money he spends on gear, which is exceptionally wise. That would be my suggestion. So the first thing I'm going to go over is your arena team and make some suggestions. The first is you're actually playing a really fun team. I think the reason why you're arena rank 29 is because you took a break for about three or four months and came back and it's just really hard to get into that top five when you take a break like that in this game. Um, a lot of people, when they take a big break, choose to just re-roll their account and do a new account. Um, but as far as your stats to the right, they all look great. You've been donating a lot of gear, so that's really good. Uh, as far as the team, let's just go ahead and go through it really quick. So for Maul, the first thing I would say is, um, unless you have potency on him because of the speed secondaries, for example, this has nine speed secondary and this has a 13 speed secondary, unless you have have them on there specifically for that speed, I would actually get rid of the potency and change that out for a critical damage set so that way you can do more damage with your Darth Maul. Now I know you don't have critical damage unlocked yet with Jawas, we'll get there in a second, that will be your first priority, um, but you want to make Maul fast and you don't need to add potency to him. So whatever you can do to add critical damage to him and add as much speed as possible. Now, if the only speed you can get is from these potency pieces, then so be it, use these potency sets. But otherwise, he self buffs. He puts himself up with his unique, um, with his potency. He gets potency equal to 0.3, his max health, and he boosts his max health by 20%. Those are automatic when you start a battle. So he's gonna give himself quite a bit of potency right off the get-go. As far as Darth Vader, Let's go and look at Darth Vader. Um, looks pretty good. I actually would try to get a critical damage, a critical chance set on him. Um, there's nothing like throwing the culling blade and instead of getting 50,000, you get you know 20,000 or 22,000. I mean, it's still a good hit, but it's still frustrating. And he um, unfortunately has a relatively low uh, critical chance. And so his physical critical chance right there, you can see without mods, is like 27%, which is absolutely horrific. Um, you've got it up by five subsequently through your mods, but you really want it as close to 40 and 50% as possible. So I would, if it was me, I would switch out um, the potency set for a crit chance set, and then I would add this bottom right one, instead of it offense, I would put potency there. So that way you can get a big chunk, 24% potency out of that bottom plus, and then add the critical chance set, and then try and get some critical chance secondaries. But offense is a good, offense mods are great mods on him because that's where you're really gonna get a lot of damage from him. I, I think that's excellent. But do critical chance, I think it's gonna help a lot with Darth Vader. As far as your Emperor Palpatine, you have him built really pretty good. Um, I think the only thing I saw really lacking was potency, and you really do want his potency closer or above 80%, really. And so I did notice that this plus, which you can add 24% potency, which would get you basically where I'm telling you to get, is health. So um, I know these are probably less than admirable mods you're using what you've got, but I would definitely switch this one out for a speed potency when you get a chance. Um, when you can find one maybe in the store that's for credits, do something like that. Let's go ahead and look at B2 and Nihilus. So B2 is an excellent tank right now because of the evasion meta. He's going to make sure that anybody that's trying to evade him, um, you know, he gets extra turns for. Um, it's just his relentless barrage. It's pretty awesome. But he gets... Um, anytime another ally is evaded or damaged by an attack, which is going to happen with the new meta, you know, he gets a chance to get an extra turn. 40% is uh, really, really good. So he's going to go quite a lot, and he's going to also be able to, on mow down, be able to 
will put that buff immunity over their heads, which will take away their ability to go stealth, which is pretty awesome. And it dispels those positive status effects. So very, very cool. Probably one of the, if not the best dispellers in the game. I would say it's probably the best dispeller in the game. Um, so having him on your team in this meta is really, really good. Um, as far as his um, mods, I see you've got a health set, a potency set, and then kind of a hodgepodge, one potency, one health. I would actually switch out one of these potencies uh, and one of these health for a tenacity set. Um, you want two things with the B2 Battle Droid really more than anything, and that's potency and tenacity and this is why those are the two stats you really really want more than anything and tenacity is going to make sure that he doesn't get stunned and ability blocked and and uh, immunity and all those things that are good they're going to try to apply you really want that tenacity up you know over 70 percent and his his potency over 70 percent um, and this is this is why you don't you, you want to be able to use him and tenacity is going to help him be usable so he's not sitting there in stun mode the whole time and then potency so when he actually uses his two abilities you'll actually get to apply those abilities and then on this basic he puts evasion down which for the evasion meta is awesome when you can lay it down on a sith and then um but you got to make sure your potency is high enough and then they won't evade you which is pretty cool so He's going to punish them for evasion and then he's going to add uh prevent them from evading with his basic so excellent choice of tank but i would definitely get your third mod set you really don't get a benefit right now from a mod set uh the third set because you just don't have a third set complete so make a tenacity setup that would be perfect and then lastly darth nihilus he looks really good he did a good job um oh one other thing let me go back on b2 the last thing i wanted to put on him this is really critically important is your arrow you have critical avoidance i would change that to accuracy accuracy is going to negate a percentage which at top accuracy for a five dot mod is 12 percent it negates the evasion dodge by 12 percent so if they have a 15 percent evasion or a 20 percent evasion it's going to drop their evasion down to three you know to seven percent which is far less um of the time for him so you want to definitely get a an arrow there replaced now we'll go into darth nihilus and for darth nihilus really i would just switch out his health sets he doesn't really need the health sets as much he's got a, a ridiculous uh, health pool and uh, protection pool already pretty pretty much i would actually switch those out for a critical damage set now this is the second critical damage set i've recommended and you don't have critical damage unlocked so that leads me to my very first project for you and that is actually going to be Jawas. You had mentioned that you were thinking of getting your Jawas up for the, uh, the mod challenge, and I would highly recommend it. I don't really think you're gonna need to get the star level up. I don't think that's as important with the Jawas. You're gonna probably need to take, at this star level, all your Jawas to level 72, gear nine. Level 72 gear nine is relatively quick and easy for all of these five Jawas to get up to. The only purpose in Jawas at this point for you would be to unlock the mod challenge. Um, you, you're looking at what other teams should you use for the raids and I wouldn't recommend the Jawas as your first choice. So I would only put into these guys what you need to get your critical damage done with so get these guys up to gear nine get them up to level 72 the reason why i say 72 is because at 72 you can gear them to gear nine there's a couple of gear pieces for a couple of these guys that you can't even apply unless you have them to 72 or above so take them to 72 get them to gear nine do that and then after you're done with that the next faction that i would actually recommend and this was based off of your desires of what you wanted would be clones i think that you know you said you have most of these guys stars just sitting around but you haven't actually paid to level their stars up you've been farming them for a while now and they're now all free to play 
uh, and you can farm them and you wanted to know you know what team would be good also in the raid and these guys would be good in phase two or phase four i would really do them in phase two and then work on a phase four team which i'm going to tell you about in a minute but i would work on clones i think that would be super fun it would be a fun faction to work on but get your jawas up high enough that you can go ahead and knock out that mod challenge you're looking forward to and then you can focus on your clones now i am going to give you a list of nine characters outside of clones that i think you really need to focus on okay we're going to go ahead and go through all of them first you wanted to finish your Jedi, so there are three Jedi that I would recommend. One is Barriss, you don't even have her unlocked. Two is Jedi Knight Anakin, you have him but you have not finished him. And Jedi Consular because you have his ship and his ship's a very powerful ship in the game. Um, plus that would give you five if you use Jedi Consular, Jedi Knight Anakin. Ayla, Qui-Gon, and Ahsoka, you would be able to finish the Grand Master Yoda event to get him to seven stars. And then eventually when you get General Kenobi, you can switch Je Je Jedi Consular out for General Kenobi. And if you were to farm Barriss, you could always use Barriss on this team. Now this Jedi team, the one that you've got halfway done, would be excellent for first phase since you don't have Kylo Ren for the first phase of the AAT tank raid. So that's what I would recommend for phase one. Your clones who I recommend working on after Jawas would be phase two. The next one I would recommend after Barriss, Jedi Knight Anakin, and Jedi Consular would be Sunfak. Sunfak is one of the best tanks in the game. He has a phenomenal ship that I will be recommending you use. And he is just all around an excellent uh, character for disruption. And disruption is what you need when you're facing an ever-changing meta. When the meta, when what's popular is constantly changing, you need characters that can stay the course of the entire game. I would call them end-game characters, characters you can use all the way through no matter what the meta is doing. And Sunfak is, in fact, one of those characters. He will always be applicable in the game to be able to be brought in. So he's going to be on your list of characters you'll want to farm. And then lastly, for the last five, but for Rebels, I would actually do your uh, Rogue One. And that would be for phase four of AAT plus Rogue One. Will you have all of them. So you have all of them and you could finish them up. And uh, so I would highly recommend them. Plus, in my opinion, the Rogue One team fully maxed out and everything is the best galactic war team on the market right now you can zip through galactic war on auto battle and end the galactic war with virtually all health and protection i don't know another team out there that can do that so i would highly recommend um, getting your turret your bays your cassian Jin, and k2so up so as a side projects from now for the next three to four months i'd recommend sunfac K2SO, Jin, Cassian, Baze, Chirrut, Jedi Consular, Jedi Knight, Anakin, Barris, and then just remember as your kind of primary fun uh, faction to go for, do the, do the clones, because I know you said you wanted to do the clones, um, and you can have fun leveling them up, and you can use them in phase two, and then just remember, get your Jawas up, so that way you can finish the crit damage mod set. Now, let's go ahead and go into Fleet Arena. You're doing very well in the Fleet Arena. You're using, uh, you've got a couple of ships up there, the Executrix, plus you've got Home One that you could use, and you could flip either one of those out, try them out, and see which one helps better as far as you cutting through the opponent. I'm guessing Executrix has just a little bit more offensive benefit. Um, you're using Ahsoka in your first lineup, that's excellent. You're using Biggs and the Scimitar and the TIE Fighter Pilot, that's excellent. All four of those I would keep. You are using in your initial lineup uh, Geonosian Soldier. I would actually pull him from your lineup completely. I wouldn't use him anymore. And I would replace him in your initial lineup with Slave 1. Now Slave 1 is your most powerful ship, so that would make sense to have another attacker up front. This is another reason why it's important. The Scimitar is gonna be in your initial lineup and he's going to have anyone that comes in as backup um, which you're, you're going to cut through and kill someone pretty quick and then they're going to have a backup come in and that's going to put target lock on plus your TIE fighter pilot puts target lock. Now you only have a five star ship. Your, your captains are um, executors is at five and home ones at four. So with executrix, you get two slots in your backup reserve. That's probably why you're using him over home one. But um, I would put in the back, I would put in 
a wedge and sunfac and i would probably do tank first sunfac first and then wedge last in your backup and this is why when sunfac comes in he'll probably be replacing biggs who got probably blown up by that time because he's your tank and then you'll have a tank to replace your tank and two wedge will come in last and wedge is one of the most powerful attackers in the game he's one of the most powerful ships i've seen him hit for 70 to 100,000 pretty consistently especially debuffed enemies so i would highly recommend having him as your last line of defense uh, or offense so to speak so that is what i recommend for your ships that's what i recommend for your farming and for your your raids as far as all of that goes i hope that this helps you i hope that everybody watching it it helps as always have yourselves a wonderful afternoon keep your gaming on warrior out